Let me do something we haven't done before and take you on a tour inside the Autospark T2 chip. My CTO, Rick Hetherington, will be your tour guide. Rick, take us through the fascinating technologies that makes Autospark T2 a truly unique microprocessor. Nice avatar, Rick. Well, too bad you are not that good looking in real life. <laughs> uh, your first life. Well, thanks, David. Nice joke. Uh, good looking, and I can fly, too. Can you believe that? Uh, let's step back, and we can take a look at the entirety of the chip. There are 500 million transistors on an UltraSpark T2. Uh, to the north and south of the yellow rectangle in the center are the eight Spark cores. There's also eight uh, level two cache uh, tag arrays in that area as well. To the left and right of the cores, you'll find the, the data arrays for the level two cache, uh, the pins that drive the fully buffered DIMM, as well as uh, uh, the memory controllers to the left and right. In the lower bottom sections to the left and right, are the integrated functions you talked about earlier, 10 gigabit Ethernet and, and the uh, PCI Express. So if we, we can highlight, we'll start with highlighting the Spark Core. What we have on the Spark Core, as you mentioned earlier, are eight threads on two independent pipelines. There's also one floating point unit and one crypto coprocessor. The nice thing about this, it only measures 11 square millimeters and 4.5 watts. Talk about high throughput at very, very low power. The next thing we can highlight is the, the yellow bounding box here in the center. Uh, what this is, this is our crossbar. And the crossbar interconnects the eight spark cores to the memory hierarchy to the eight uh, banks of level two cache. Very little active area here. This is compri comprised mainly of, of metal, mainly of wire. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at the level two cache array. This is one half megabyte of cache, uh, one of the eight banks. It's fully pipelined, 16-way set associative level two cache array. And we can move on. So should your program suffer a miss in that level two cache, we have to access memory. And what we have is a memory controller. We chose technology, fully buffered DIMM technology, and each of the memory of the four memory controllers drives two fully buffered DIMM channels. What we achieve with the, with the memory controller is very high bandwidth and very high capacity. So there's no trade-off of capacity and bandwidth. The UltraSpark T2 can support up to 512 gigabytes of memory at 60 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. So moving on, we can move down to the, we talked earlier about integrating 10 gigabit Ethernet. So we're looking at, a, at the, the uh, full support for 10 gigabit Ethernet. This is the receive and transmit pipelines. David mentioned earlier about it being friendly or at least multi-threaded in its nature, uh, there are 16 DMA channels on the send and receive side to distribute the load across all of the, all the uh, internal, internal uh, threads. Moving and, on. Uh, why is this important? Because as many of you know, the system performance can be dramatically impacted by I.O. bottlenecks and access to the network. The integration eliminates all of these bottlenecks and a significant, significant amount of network overhead. So in turn, the data can be moved much more quickly and efficiently. And in turn, that's a one-two punch to, per, to performance enhancement. And besides, fewer parts means less power consumed and much higher reliability. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, the, the next integrated feature I want to point out to you, David, are the PCI Express. We've integrated PCI Express directly on the chip. Uh, these are eight lanes at running at 2.5 gigabits per second, uh, tightly integrated into the, into the processor core. So what emanates from the chip, all around the chip, in fact, are high-speed SERTES interfaces. Bringing I.O. right onto the processor really accelerates I.O. intensive applications like online transaction processing, streaming media, 
or support functions like server backup. And in combination with the multi-threaded 10 gigabit ethernet, the data access performance on this chip is really phenomenal. And literally, again, this is a one-two punch to performance enhancement. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, the last feature I want to point out, David, is, is our crypto coprocessing element that was integrated onto each of the Spark cores. What we support are 10 of the most, most uh, highly utilized ciphers in the industry. So for bulk encryption, we support DES, triple DES, A AES, and RC4. For hash functions, secure hashing functions, we have SHA-1, SHA-256, and MD5. Uh, for key exchange, RSA up to a 2048-bit key, an elliptic curve cryptography, and then finally CRC32. So 10 unique uh, hardware-assisted functions uh, on each of the eight cores. Again, why is this important? The need for secure computing actually gets more compelling, more complex, and more expensive every day integrating the crypto accelerations right into the processor chip actually uh, make the crypto secure computing much more uh, performing and uh, provide many security uh, computation function at minimal performance impact. So the security performance on the Autospark T2 processor actually delivers up to 10 times the performance compared to competing processors and up to 17 times the performance comparing to add-on card. So literally, you don't pay extra for extra security. Thanks for the tour, Rick. And now quit playing and get back to your first life and work. <laughs>